A can of soda is labeled as containing 14 fluid ounces. The quality control manager wants to verify that the filling machine is neither over nor under filling the cans. So, this is about the mean amount of ounces in the cans. Always equal in the null hypothesis. And here, neither underfilling nor overfilling. Not less, not more, just that it's not equal then. In both cases, comparing to 14. So after obtaining a sample, a simple random sample of 84 cans, doing measurements, finding out X bar, we're not told what X bar is equal to. And even if we have been told that in advance, we would not be referring to that up here in the hypotheses. The sample evidence leads the manager to reject the null hypothesis. That is sufficient evidence that it is out of calibration. It could be overfilling or underfilling but it's not giving 14. So when we say that there is sufficient evidence, that's pointing towards the alternative hypothesis being the true one and that the null hypothesis was false. Suppose it is not really out of calibration. That would be a type one error leading the quality control manager to make changes, uh, do some fixing of the machines, etc., that didn't need to be done. So it led the quality control manager to reject the null hypothesis when, in fact, the null hypothesis is true. Management has informed the quality control department that it does not want to shut down the filling machine unless the evidence is overwhelming that the machine is out of calibration. What level of significance would you recommend that the quality control manager use? Explain. Okay, well, some typical values. Alpha as a level of significance. 10%, 5%, or 1%. The probability of a type 1 error goes along with what you set for alpha. Set it very low. The lowest choice I have here is the 0.01 or 1%. So this would make the probability of a type 1 error small. That's what we want.